Okay, good morning, friends. Um, this is ASA Firewall Training Course Outline. For those of you that are aspiring to uh, become a network security engineer, um, a system security administrator, the firewall training course would be a good idea for you to kick start your security career. And before you actually come down to our office, at Ikeja, Lagos, for the training, it is also important that you get to know what's on the menu in terms of uh, topics that will be covered in the ASA firewall training. So I'll put these items together. We have like uh, 16 items that make up the course outline. And I'm just going to walk you through all these uh, topics and these are the topics that we are going to actually discuss and also have some practical sessions um, when you eventually come down to our office for the training just so you know we use asa appliance the 5500 series 5500x series to be specific, we use 5506X, which is the entry level of the uh, ASA 5500X product line. So the 5500, uh, 5506X that we are using for this training is running ASA software uh, version 9.6. Now what we are going to cover or what we aim to achieve in the course of this training is listed in this um, page here we have to uh, learn of course how to get started with the cisco sa firewall unboxing the sa firewall uh, initial login into the firewall getting to understand the access modes in the firewall in case the firewall is running an older version of the ASA firewall software, also show you how you can update the way the software of the ASA. Of course, you need to do this by going to cisco.com website and um, downloading the image before you eventually do the update on your ASA box. Of course, you need to have a Cisco uh, service contract for you to be able to do that. So we're going to show you how you can do that in your own environment. We'll go through the basic firewall configurations, the host name, remote management, and the likes. Um, the initial configuration of different interfaces of the ASA that you are going to be using and putting IP addresses on those interfaces. Those make up the basic firewall configuration. We also want to understand that uh, the Cisco SA firewall box has uh, different security levels. By default, there is a flow of traffic between different security levels on the SA. So we want to get to understand what those security levels are. For instance, the outside interface of the ASA, that is the port on the ASA that you are using to connect to the outside world or to the internet or put it straight to your internet service provider is going to be assigned a security level of zero, which means uh, that interface is not trusted at all. And then the other port on the ASA that is going to be connecting to your local area network is going to be given a security level of 100 which means that that port is highly trusted so there is a default flow of traffic between the security level of 100 uh, traffic originating from it and going to the outside passing through the security level of zero interface so we'll get to know what those default traffic flows are all about then NAT also is what is going to help us so that the internal users in our corporate network can get out to the internet 
get to different websites that they want to go to on the internet so see how we can set up NAT network address translation on the ESA bearing in mind that there are different ways of configuring NAT in Cisco ESA firewall if you are using the image or the ESA software version 8.3 and below the way you configure NAT is quite different from someone that is using ESA firewall that runs version 8.4 image and above so we're going to see the differences and then how to approach the NAT configurations depending on the image that the ESA firewall in your own environment is running and after that we are going to look at the different types of NATs um, from 8.4 up we're going to see the manual NATs what and when it is used and how to configure it auto NATs when to configure it when to use it and of course when to use and when to configure identity NATs we see how we can segment our network it might have internet facing devices like your web servers your email servers and it's a bet, best practice that these kind of servers are segmented from the corporate LAN so we'll put these servers on the DMZ so the ASA is going to help us see how we can isolate or segment these networks these internet facing servers by configuring a DMZ network we're also going to see how we can control both inbound and outbound traffic within the, within the ASA and to do this we need to know how to configure access control lists in the ASA and there are also this new feature in the ASA that is called the uh, network objects if you are running ASA image version 8.4 the network object actually it helps us to tidy up or simplify our access list configuration and make applying this access list much more easier so we are going to see how we can use both access control list and network object to control inbound and outbound access to the ASA and of course if you have ASA one of the major benefits you get from ASA is side-to-side -side VPN so you may have a number of remote offices that you want to tie down to the head office using VPN connection the ASA will help you to connect these different branch offices to the head office by way of IPsec side-to-side -side VPN so this side-to-side -side VPN is going to be in two phases we are going to do IPsec side-to-side -side VPN configuration between two Cisco ASA and we're also going to take you through on how you can set up this between Cisco ASA and Cisco router or even any other vendors router for that matter and not only side-to-side -side VPN we are going to see how we can set up a remote access VPN implementing Cisco SSL VPN on the ASA and we'll be testing this remote access VPN by trying to connect remotely to the ASA using the Cisco AnySecure uh, VPN client software of course the, one of the capabilities that the ASA has is the ability to what detect threats so we are going to see both basic and advanced threat detection configuration on the Cisco ASA firewall then after that we are going to see how we can harden the ASA all the services that are not needed has to be turned off on the ASA so go through the process of ASA device hardening we also go through the process of routing within the Cisco ASA firewall that is item 14 on this outline the ASA supports different routing protocols starting from static routes default routing and of course the dynamic routing protocols like RIP OSPF and EIGRP we see how we can set up these routing protocols on the ASA firewall and of course all of these things that we are going to cover will be command line based so it's a command line interface tutorial but item 15 is now going to show us how we can still do and manage all of these configurations 
within the Cisco ASA firewall using the GUI, that is the ASA security device.